Hey guys, welcome back. I'm David and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. And this is where we're doing the E-War Customs Great Guitar Giveaway. And check this out. It is beginning to look like a guitar now. Huh? I just got the neck all shaped up and everything. And I contoured the body. I put the binding on. This is maple binding, curly maple binding. And I did, I started carving the top. I still got a ways to go with everything, but it's looking pretty cool, isn't it? I'm pretty excited. I hope you guys are too. Because this guitar, when this, uh, when I'm done building, I'm giving it away to some lucky uh, uh, subscriber. And if you don't know about that, if, uh, if you will subscribe to my channel and send in the name in the comments of what you think ought to call this guitar, I'm going to enter your name in the drawing. And at the end of this, uh, at the end of this build, I'm going to pull a name out of a hat and that person is getting this guitar. So it's going to be really cool. Uh, so it's coming along good. I just want to show you. It's like a little teaser. I want to do this so it you know, gets you to come back again and watch. Uh, but anyway, in this video, I'm working on the neck. I've got, I'm, I'm uh, going to route in the truss rod. I'm going to uh, uh, slot the fretboard, and I'm going to install the fretboard, and I'm going to cut out the, the shape of the neck and everything. And, and anyway, that's what I'm going through in this, uh, in this episode. And then, uh, and anyway, so I just want to show you all the guitar. I'm pretty excited. I hope you all are too. Uh, give me a like and subscribe if you like my videos and tell your friends about it. Let them know that there's a giveaway going on. And if they enter a name and they subscribe, they could win this guitar just like you can too. Anyway, let's get going with the video. And let's start working on this neck. Okay, so here I am with my uh, neck blank and my routing jig for the truss rod. And I'm just going along and making some marks on the side of my template that lays out the, uh, the nut, the first fret, 12th fret, 24th fret, and the end of the, uh, the fingerboard, fretboard. I just like those for reference part marks as I'm uh, laying out my truss rod and routing it in. That way it helps me tell where to start and stop it. Well, I'm going to set it so the end of the truss rod is just at the uh, bridge side of the nut, so to speak. So I'll have to reach under the nut with my uh, Allen key to adjust the truss rod. I like that so the nut's then sitting on a nice, uh, firm, flat piece of wood that doesn't have a gap going down the middle of it. All right, well, with my truss rod laid out nice, it's ready to start routing it. So that's my DeWalt router, it's a plunge router. I have a quarter inch, uh, I think it's a down cut bit. I gotta wax those rails a little bit once in a while to keep it sliding nice. Those rails are, are, uh, are nice and straight and my router slides right down in between them. And I just continually reset the depth until I reach the full 3 eighths of an inch depth. And once I do that, the end of my truss rods are a little bit wider, so I'll swap out the bit and I'll put in a 3 8 and route, uh, route out just the end where the nut is. Okay, now that it's routed, i got to take my quarter inch chisel and I square up the ends, because the router obviously cuts uh, round, and the uh, ends of the truss rod are both square, so I use my chisel and also use it to taper the end a little bit wider too. So now the, route, the uh, truss rod fits well, but now I have to use this 3 8 bull nose bit to route the very uh, last, probably half inch of the truss rod, which is 3 8 of an inch wide. I'll also use that for the access hole for the truss rod. So now I just have to route that last little bit and use my chisel a bit to get it, uh, get it tightened up. That truss rod tapers, it goes from quarter inch and gets a little bit bigger than a quarter and then it ends up at uh, 3 8 of an inch wide. So you just have to do a little work on the end there to get it all to fit right. You want the truss rod to fit really snug in there. Uh, as you can see, I've got to pull it out with the uh, uh, center punch I use. A little more chiseling on it. Work at it for a little bit and it'll fit really nice. You want it really tight in there. So you can see it fits real snug. You see where I chiseled it out a little bit at the ends to get it in there. But that's basically how a truss rod should look. Nice and tight. 
flush on top, firm on the bottom of the neck. Turned out well. Okay, so now it's time to route in for my uh, my uh, truss rod access hole in the tilted part of the headstock. And it still fits within my jig, so that makes it kind of nice. And that's a 3 eighths of an inch uh, bull nose bit, the same one I used for the end of the truss rod. And I think I routed about 3 eighths of an inch deep, about an inch and a half long too. All right, so now I have to connect the two uh, holes together, the truss rod uh, uh, slot as well as the uh, the access hole. So that's a quarter inch bit. That's a super long bit, so I can uh, hold the drill way back and keep it level. And I run through. Of course, then I'll check it with my uh, uh, Allen key to make sure it all lines up good before I put it together. So that's about it. Got it all routed up, and I'll just uh, loosen up those uh, holding bolts and take it out. It's laying in there. It fits good. The access hole is cut. It's a nice round bottom hole, so it'll look nice. Uh, I leave. I don't put a cover on that because I like the looks of them. But uh, that's it. It's all in there and ready to go, ready for a fretboard. All right, so I've got my template glued down or stuck down with double-sided sticky tape onto the neck. And I notice there's yellow tape on that template. The reason I do that is when I originally make the template for the body and the neck, I get them to fit really tight together. Uh, but I like making the actual neck just a shade bigger, so I've probably got two, maybe even three layers of tape around it. So I'm making it a couple of thousands bigger than, uh, than what my template is, because I like having it really snug fit when the neck goes into the body. I don't like it too snug, but I like to be able to shape it and fit it at the end before I actually glue it in. So that's why I do that. Now I'm over here at my router, and I'm going to route it down all the way around. Yeah, that tape, uh, to me it really helps. It gives you that little extra room to, uh, to do the final fitment of the neck once everything's built. And uh, then you could use a little sandpaper to sand it down a little bit to get a fit uh, really nice into the neck pocket. I don't like it overly tight. You got to have room for glue, but I like having it. I like having it where I could fit it by hand in the end. So that's why I do that. All right, because this is a tilt back headstock, you can't uh, do the whole cutting of the neck and the headstock at one time. So. Uh, now that I've got the neck uh, cut down to size, I pop the template off and I go ahead and I do my rough cut on the bandsaw for the headstock, as you see me doing here. And then I'll reapply the template to route it to its final shape. So this is close, but not really, really close. The router will get it all the way. So here I'm getting the template stuck on the uh, headstock to where I could route it out. That's just a small piece of tape, not a very big surface area, so I usually got to do something extra to, to make sure that double-sided sticky tape is stuck really well. So I got my clamp out there, and once I get it lined up in place, I'll clamp it in three or four spots to uh, really squeeze down on it tight. Otherwise, that uh, double-sided tape will let loose. So that's a good little tip right there to use that clamp to uh, really press that tape together. So now I just route out the headstock like I did the rest of the neck. That's a bottom bearing bit. That's actually a top and bottom bearing bit. That's a nice bit. There's two inches of uh, carbide in the middle, so I can uh, either use the top portion of the bottom. It just does a nice job. And so while that template's on there, I'll go ahead and drill the uh, tuner holes too. This worked out really well. That's a super sharp bit. I think it's a 10 millimeter. Really nice brad point bit. So there it is. It's set for the next stage. Okay, now that that's all done, I'm going to set up and uh, sand the final thickness of my headstock. So I got a little gauge I use there and my spindle sander. And I've got that uh, basically just a backboard, kind of a fence I put up for it. And I just run in there real nice on that gauge, and it gives me uh, one side of my volutes already cut. And as you can see here, the I set up once and do two necks at one time. There you go. So here we are. Uh, 
we've got our necks uh, brought to this stage right here. And you see they're all cut out. We cut and routed the sides. So the shape is good, the truss rod's in, the little access hole is cut, and drilled through, I even drilled the tuners. Uh, you probably just saw that in the clip before this, but, but anyway. So uh, here we are, I'm gonna get ready and do the fingerboards. And I had these two really cool looking pieces of uh, Wenge uh, from the last time I made some fingerboards and I intended to use those until I grabbed them and I realized that uh, I'd actually cut these out for a 22 fret, uh, 22 fret fingerboard. So I don't know why I just didn't make them 20 inches long, but I didn't. So, but as luck would have it, I still have a really nice piece of Wenge, the same piece that uh, those other two fingerboards came out of. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut it up. I'm gonna cut it 20 inches long, rip a piece three inches wide out of that, and that's one inch thick. So I'll probably get three nice size, uh, let's say three eighths pieces out of it, maybe five sixteenths. And that'll give me a good thickness to go to continue to plane it down and, and bring it down to about a, a big quarter, maybe five sixteenths of an inch. At any rate, so uh, I'm gonna get set up over there with my bandsaw, put my resaw blade in there, and get going. Hey, check this out. I wasn't really planning on going through and uh, remaking fingerboards like this, but I had a piece of this Wenge left over. Look how beautiful that looks. Man, that's just some really awesome looking wood. These came out of the same piece. I had enough to make this. I had enough to make a little bit of a headstock plate too. Look at that. And look at these, uh, that thing that looks kind of like a kneecap or whatever. That's like right there at the 12th fret. Let me see if I can get this in the camera. So I think those are gonna be like really awesome looking fingerboards, fretboards. All right, so we're ready to uh, slot the fretboard. See, I've got my Stumac uh, fret slotting template. I just glue the, uh, the fretboard onto it. I line it up on the 25 and a half inch scale length side. And each little slot, uh, each little slot represents one of the frets. And I have a mark just offset from the blade on my little sled there. And I just move it along to the mark each time. And it comes out real nice, nice and square and straight. Works out really well. All slotted up. All right, so now I'm gonna mark the center of my fretboard. It's now two and three quarter wide or whatever, and I've got to cut it down for the taper. So I find the center, lay my, uh, my uh, fretboard template on there, get it lined up good. It's stuck down with double-sided sticky tape. It's good too to cut off the edges uh, after you do the uh, slotting because that uh, slotting blade, it could wobble a little bit on the way in and then also on the way out of the cut. So this takes off that wobble so you're left with nothing but perfectly straight, smooth uh, fret slots. I just run it through my uh, band saw and then I'll take it over to the router table and route it off flush. Now I'm going to bind this, uh, these fret boards too, but I'm going to do that after they're glued onto the neck. Okay, so I'm getting ready to uh, uh, glue my uh, fret boards on. Um, obviously, I think I've already shown it. I've cut in all my uh, fret slots. I've got my center line going down the middle. I used my template to uh, cut them to the proper width. And... Uh, and then I took the, the neck that I'm working on and I resurfaced this one more time, the face of this. I made sure that that break angle right there was just square and straight and everything. I didn't take much off, I just surfaced it a little bit just to clean it up and make sure everything was good. I went ahead and as you just saw, I ran it through my uh, spindle sander over there and I got the thickness of the headstock is good now. The way I do it with the fingerboard on there, or with the fretboard in place, it's gonna be harder to do some of that stuff. So anyway, so I'm getting ready to do it, and this is how I'm gonna do it. So um, I've, got, I've got my nut blanks here, and I'm gonna take this one, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use uh, this uh, sanding block, which is a very flat piece of MDF with some 150 glued to it. 
that may be 220 actually. And I'm gonna sand this, I'm gonna thin it just a little bit. Um, all my nuts start out at 3 16ths of an inch thick and I wind up thinning them down a little bit. So I'm gonna thin this one first, and then I'm gonna use this as my gauge. I'm gonna set it right up here on the flat part of the neck, right there at the break angle. Let me see if I can show that to you. See, it's basically gonna sit right there. Oop. Right there at the edge of the bread. That's where I want it to sit. So just on this side of the nut is where it's gonna the, the headstock is gonna break off and go down. So uh, I'm gonna use this as my gauge for setting the placement of my fretboard. Okay. And the way I'm gonna keep the fretboard in perfect place is I use this little material here, and this is side dot fret marker material. It's a PVC or an ABS plastic. Uh, stuff I get from Stu Mac, I use it for my side dots. And, uh, and it's 3 30 seconds of an inch uh, in diameter, okay? And the cool thing about this is, is I could drill a hole right through one of my fret slots and down into the neck and then sink one of the, a little piece of this off there and make an indexing pin out of it. Sink it down in there and that's gonna keep my uh, fretboard lined up exactly where I want it. I'll put one in each end. I'll put one up here on the first fret and one down here on like the 23rd fret or something like that. So I'll have one in each end and that's gonna hold it in place because when you put that glue on there and start clamping it, this thing gets all kinds of squirrely and starts shifting all over the place. So anyway, so that's the process I'm gonna go through and I just kinda wanted to explain it first. Uh, so at any rate, uh, that's what I'm going to do. So here we go. So I'm going to sand that nut down. I want it a little bit thinner than the actual nut. And also, nuts are not flat and square and straight, so you got to work on them to, uh, uh, to get everything just right. So but anyway, I align it with the nut. I put the nut where it goes. I run my fretboard up to it. I want to make sure it lines up just right for the brake angle. Once I do that, I clamp the fretboard on place, in place, and I drill my 3 32nd inch uh, holes through two spots. I go diagonally, I'll go like on one side of the truss rod on the nut side, and then on the bridge side, I do the other side of the, uh, the truss rod. So those little pins, those little 3 32nd dowels I put in there really, really work well. Then I'll tape, before I glue this, I tape over the truss rod to keep glue from getting down into the, uh, down in next to the truss rod. You want to keep that free and able to move. This just keeps it back a little bit so when it squeezes in, it doesn't actually gush down into that truss rod. So I'll spread the glue and then pull that tape off. Just like that. Then you just stick the fretboard on those pins. I flip it over. That's I'm gluing it down on a piece of granite, which is uh, perfectly straight and flat. I just slap a few clamps on it and let it dry. Okay, that's just a little bit of cleanup on the edge. It kind of cuts off the glue, and the fretboard was probably just a just a smidge bigger than the than the neck. We want those to be the same. So that's about it. That thing is ready to be bound and radiused. Well guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the nice comments too. Uh, every night uh, when I'm done with work for the day, I go through the comments and I do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. I'm gonna answer everybody uh, as fast as I can. I hope I get to them quick enough for you, but anyway, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the comments you give me and the likes and all that kind of thing. I'm really excited about this guitar. I think it's really looking good. It's shaping up. Finally, this uh, thought I had in my head is kind of taking shape and taking form, and I'm real pleased with it. And I hope you are too. Uh, anyway, check out my other videos. I've got other videos up there building other guitars and everything. And uh, check that out. And if you like this, uh, if you like my channel or like my videos, how about you give me a like and subscribe? Anyway, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you all next time.